Hi, guys. It is, well, it was a spectacularly gorgeous late winter day here in the great state of Texas here. It is the Ides of March. That is March 15th, 2023. Beware the Ides of March and every other day in 2023. But it is a great day because for the first time in two months, uh, I have just now discovered that my old trail pal down here in the bowels of the doomosphere elliot jacobson has somehow survived the past Barely. two months while i have been lying on a beach in mexico drinking margaritas and watching beautiful little turistas this man uh we're gonna find out well, good lord dude every time i turned on the uh, the last time we spoke you were sandbagging your house and apparently it worked because you're still here so elliot jacobson Come join us, and uh, of course, my name is Sam Mitchell, in case you don't know. In case you don't recognize me, I have lost a couple of pounds since the last time you saw me, Elliot. Do you even, I don't know if Elliot even recognizes who the hell this guy is. So, Elliot, come on, and uh, I will come back and tell, uh, tell you and the folks about my own winter vacation, but let's hear about your last two months in the great state of California. Well... I think most people know that we are uh, sort of in the middle of Armageddon out here. We're getting, uh, you know, record rainfall and then, hey, another record rainfall and, oh, less than that, another five inch storm. Today. I mean, just, just crazy stuff here. And, you know, a 101 up north by where my son lives in Northern California. I mean, the, the freeway is sliding down the hill and they don't have an alternative route for 101 which is like the main north south high, highway uh at mendocito it's just been crazy here um and uh you know as far as my yard goes it is so wet in my yard you remember all the uh decomposed granite i had here around my yard that washed right? away weeks ago yeah well no what's happened to it is we have mold on it and then it's so wet that there's mold growing on top of the mold <laughs> you know there's like layers of this stuff like we were somehow in i don't know in in the jungles of central america somewhere now you know it's finally started to warm up and i mean really the the really challenging part of this because because yeah well there's lots of erosion and inconvenience with this weather the real challenge here is how green it is right now how much stuff is growing you know, everywhere you look, stuff is just growing like crazy. I mean, I've never seen this level of growth here before, ever. And, uh, of course, what's going to follow <laughs> is going to be some massive heat wave, you know, yeah, some better. hot, some dry summer weather. And then and then fires like this state has never, you know, seen before. So uh, it's just it just feels like we're at the start of, of the complete. Uh, annihilation of this state. but it's going to be so easy for those choppers to dip those big buckets that's right they, they, they will have lots, uh, last lots year of reservoirs couldn't find any water in, in the reservoirs to dip their buckets into now yeah they, they should start they should get a head start yeah they should have those buckets ready uh so yeah i mean the fires later this year are going to be just crazy but i mean just the mudslides the landslides just the destruction of infrastructure and we have this record snowpack here. So all we need, and we had a couple this week, and it's made national news with all the flooding we've had. All we need, though, is one good, solid early April uh, atmospheric warm Pineapple Express type of river, followed by a heat wave, right? And we're going to have this all, and this is an all-time record snowpack. I mean, bar none. This is it. This is more snow than is ever been in these mountains ever that's been recorded and when that stuff if that stuff melts all at once it's going to be i mean it's, i i can't imagine the now, wasn't the, it wasn't the central valley uh in like 1860 right, under yeah water is do, are we looking at lake uh, merced or <laughs> well i mean they were already talking about monterey uh being cut off because of the river you know the rising waters and yeah, I mean, this is usually when you talk about that 1860 event, you're talking about an atmospheric river dumping that as far as rain in one event and causing that thing. 
but uh, it, the same thing could happen through another dynamic, which, yeah. you know, which is is just getting a, a a warm atmospheric river melting a huge quantity of this record snowpack followed by a heat wave. I mean, and that's exactly where we are right now. Um, uh, so, I mean, a- anything could happen here, Sam. We need you to come back to California when you. Oh are yeah, bring that beautiful sunny weather. It was the <laughs> day I left is when all of this shit started. Uh, it was Christmas because I left on Christmas Day, and I think it was December twenty sixth is when the rain moved in. It's pretty much yeah. You it, like like you you were the one holding it away. It's like I was, I was uh, <laughs> Moses holding back the uh, holding back <laughs> so, the Red Sea or whatever Moses did. To, let me just show you this picture behind me. So this is. Uh, the lowest, deepest snowpack we have ever had in Santa Barbara. Uh, and, you know, all of these roads were closed, but the locals decided to go up there anyway. And so, so you know, there is these huge traffic jams, essentially on roads that were impassable by locals who were like, let's go up and look at all the snow we never get. So, yeah, I snapped this picture one morning in the middle of, of all these things. So, anyway, that's my story. Sam, tell me a little bit about your adventures and if you could just summarize your adventures like like uh, what did you learn from this great well, adventure that you went on what was that well, i want to i want to keep the lessons i learned about uh about my trip to mexico germane to the discussions that we talk about uh here in the doomosphere and, and i could go off in several directions which i'll i will nip all of those buds uh and say to the main trunk, I, I guess my my two takeaways uh, from that trip is I think more than any point in all of my travels, simply because it's the you know, I haven't been traveling in Latin America. When was the I, I've been gone for like twelve years, and and coming back is the it, it's just the ungodly amount of plastic pollution it's just it 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 is i mean even for someone you know you're like doomers we we read about this and stuff and, and look at all of these pictures from uh from all of these places but until you get out there and it, it's it, it it's truly this one snapshot. I was in the Yucatan Peninsula, is where I in, in Mexico in the Yucatan Peninsula, and a few days in Belize. Uh, it's now you know right in the tourist areas where the gringos you, you know come down and spend their money. I don't really know. I guess Rumpelstiltskin. He comes out at midnight. Some little some little gnome comes out at midnight and cleans all this shit up uh, right before the gringos get up and start doing their yoga positions on the beach, you know, and and worshiping the sunrise and little garbage gnomes have come through and swept it up. So the, the vast, vast majority of people who go down there, <clears throat> the tourists who go down there are completely clueless to this to this absolute tsunami of uh, 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 uh of this plastic pollution i i put on one video out on that other channel where you know i was at this one place this absolutely beautiful place i mean not a scrap of plastic where these springs were bubbling up and the monkeys were hanging out in the trees and 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 i started following this water course that well, was, was a drainage system. And as soon as I hit this line where they know that no tourist is going to go, I mean, just looking up the drainage, just, it, just, you know, right out of your worst nightmares. And I mean, e- every road down there in, in, in Mexico, I mean, outside, I mean, outside of the tourist areas, it's just, the scale of of the problem, and I'm sure compared to like the Philippines and uh, in Indonesia and, and stuff, but uh, I, it it was truly jaw dropping what's happened over the past twelve years. And the other thing down there, of course, being a tourist myself, was just 
the, the absolute horror of of tourism this this place this un this godforsaken hellhole called Playa del Carmen I mean, it it is the it is right up there. I'm putting it right up there with Lagos, Nigeria, as wow. the uh, poster child of uh, of the end times or, or a poster child of the collapse. It was everything that is wrong with this planet. So, uh, is, Sam, is let there. me ask you a question, Sam. Yeah. So, what did you expect? I mean, how is this different than what you expected it to be? I mean, it, it seems like. Yeah. Like, yeah, of course, everybody thinks that Mexico is the shithole of, of, you know, this this part of the world. So how is this different than your expectations? Uh, I, I, I haven't. I hadn't been to the Yucatan. It was my 50 year anniversary. And they say the last time I was in Cancun, it was 1973. I was yeah. literally camping on a deserted beach, literally camping on a deserted beach. And uh, let me tell you that Cancun is not a deserted beach anymore. And I, I knew, obviously, in 50 years, Elliot, that that it but but it was it it it, it was just gross. It, it was gross. And I mean, all the way down to Tulum, from uh, Cancun down to Tulum. And now what they're doing, the only person, the only person or people talk is is, is manga bay is this damn tourist train is called the <laughs> ironically enough the maya train I, I loved being down in the middle of the mayan the collapsed mayan civilization you know, literally being at not only was i in the middle of the collapsed mayan civilization but it's where the asteroid hit so i you know i, I was you know i was there with some history i had been through the asteroid i was right there with the asteroid and with the collapsed mayan civilization and to name this abortion the mayan train is this tourist train which they're ramming down pretty much all the way to the belize border and so, what they want to do is bring this model south of Tulum. They they want it to be one unbroken uh, Playa del Carmen. They're spending 20 billion with a B, 20 billion dollars on this railroad to bring this model. It, it, it's absolute destruction. And it's really sad. It's really sad. So uh, Anyway, uh, that that's what I brought back from my winter vacation was uh, just, just just like you, you know we're we're fucked. Yeah, um, you were as when I spoke to you, your destination was Belize, and I always thought that okay, Belize is like this sort of um, a little heaven down there. For I mean, it's an English speaking country. Right? Yeah, at least. what went wrong in Belize? What went wrong in Belize is we had, uh, you know, rented this little cabin out in the jungle on the outskirts of San Ignacio, and uh, I mean, we were going to be there for fifteen nights, and we get there, and this damn disco across the uh, across the road. I mean, I, you know, I poured my margarita, uh, I go out on the, we're, we're in this beautiful little cabin in the jungle and stuff, and, and, and I settle down on the porch with my margarita and uh, th this damn disco started up at seven o'clock at night, went all night long and, uh, you know, I had, I had paid over $900. This. So I got up the next morning and I went up. This was an Airbnb. And I just told the guy, I'm out of here. And uh, we ended up just staying for a few days in San Ignacio. And then uh, we headed back to Mexico. So, all right. Well, <laughs> that sounds like quite a trip. Welcome back to so you're in Texas now. I am really great now. You are that in... picture behind there. That is not right. That is that is my that's not Texas. My, no, that's the picture of my garden uh, in uh, in New York, which where I where you will I be in have... April or something like that. At some point, you're heading I think back. There's about a foot of snow in this. If you were looking 
Yeah. That's the sitting on the it looks like that right now where you, you know, uh, I, I can only imagine what it looks like in uh in, in Ithaca, New York. So uh yeah, I'm uh back in the great state. You know, it's the biggest party on the planet, the the uh South by Southwest Music Festival. I just have an email from my buddy. I where are you? I'm at Sea Boys. I thought you were gonna be here. And <laughs> so all of my uh clueless lovable friends are at the biggest party on planet earth here in austin texas and i'm sitting here talking about plastic pollution and the uh you know i i on plastic pollution i i just read an article today that they actually had some like like volcanic rocks that were yeah you know, and and there was like plastic in the middle of these volcanic rocks or something like that i couldn't I couldn't believe it. It's like, like you're kidding me, right? Right. Plastic has now become so much a part of, of the planet. It's not just like we have, you know, rivers full of plastic or oceans full of plastic or the great, you know, plastic in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, we now have actually rocks with embedded plastic in them that are going to survive a billion years, right? Well, well, nobody can argue that we're in a new geologic age right now. If anybody is acting like the Anthropocene or the Murano scene, as I call it, uh, is uh, not in full swing, I did, I'll just real quickly tell you, the article he's talking about is Brazilian researchers find terrifying plastic rocks on remote island. They have pictures of these things. Uh, this is some island in the middle of nowhere, uh, 700 miles off the coast of Brazil, <laughs> 700 miles off the coast of Brazil, they, they're, that that plastic is literally mixing. Yeah, it's like melted in the, it, it like into mixing the rocks. The deep sand. This geologist, quote, this is a new, this is new and terrifying at the same time, because pollution has reached geology. Can you put, can you imagine being a geologist? You know, you have your igneous and your sedimentary and all the different rocks you study. Yeah, and and then, somebody hands uh, you this rock. It says, what the hell is this thing? You know, you know like, the, oh, the place where we found these samples is a permanently preserved area in Brazil near the place green turtles lay their eggs the discovery stirs questions about humans legacy on the earth we talk so much about the anthropocene and this is it the pollution the garbage in the sea and the plastic dumped in the oceans is becoming geological material preserved in the earth's geological Records are is this humans. <laughs> we are literally we have reached a new milestone. Yeah, no, this this is the most unbelievable story. Uh, like like anything else, you know, you could believe like sea level 10 meters, fine, you know, 2.0 C, fine. But like we are now rocks. Right. We have created new rocks <laughs> that will like go on for a billion years. Right. You know, and, and this story it's just, is this, it, it's just it, you know, this is just one just buried down in the middle of the uh, uh, of, you know, this is an average Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? This is an average Wednesday in 2023. And uh, we have officially, humans have officially, today, this week, uh, literally become part of the geologic record. And the fact that it's a, a, a fishing net, probably from China, my guess is, is these Chinese, uh, you know, massive fishing nets is, is the first thing that's officially making uh, its contribution to the geological record. Yeah, well, I'm. I don't know how to um, <laughs> sort of put all these things together, but you know, it feels as though this week, I, somehow, this week feels like we have a a 
turning point. Now I'll tell you there's something else. And this this affects me personally. And I know we have other stuff we're gonna get to, but this is the first week on Twitter where the trolls have found me. Oh <laughs> boy. I don't know whether they're the robot trolls or they're the Russian trolls or they're Chinese they, trolls, but having a feeding but, frenzy. It's a total feeding frenzy on Twitter. And, and so, you know, <laughs> to have have these sorts of stories coming out this week and have that as my background, you, you sort of couldn't get a more divergent, you know, reality. Like how stupid, how fucking stupid are people? How, you know, the conspiracies, just the morons out there saying this total bullshit. And then we have, you know, rocks with plastic, right? I mean, it's like. And at the same time, you know, you know, this other one, I, I don't know if I said it, it was actually on the World Economic Forum. Uh, <laughs> I did my, I did my rant. I joined the World Economic Forum at midnight. You belong I, I there. Now remember, you should have a I member of the World Economic Forum. So one of their stories is, so we already now have ocean plastic entering the geological record. And they're saying that they used to say, three times by 2050 now it's it's faster than previously thought and there's going to be three times the amount of plastic in the ocean now they've moved it up 10 years it's 2040 and 17 over the next and, and i can believe this because this is exactly what i found going down there to uh latin america it 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 matches what I saw with my own eyes that the in the next 17 years, the amount of plastic in, in our oceans is going to triple uh, by by 2040. Uh, I mean, for j just what what do you do with that? What what, what you, you know what what do you do with that? And, uh, yeah, um, you know. One of the, the amazing headlines, I just posted this this morning, or maybe it was yesterday as my sort of daily moment of doom, was this comment that Joe Biden made. And you don't <laughs> expect Joe Biden to be a doomer, right? I mean, like the last guy you expect to be a doomer is Joe Biden. But he said, you know, if we don't stay within 1.5 C, then pretty much the next generation is doomed. Right. I mean, that's I mean, did, did he use the D word? Did he actually use the D word? No, he did not use that. But 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 I know he didn't use the F word. Yeah, he didn't say we're fucking doomed. Right? <laughs> Sorry, you can't post this on your website. Uh, you yeah. I will be more careful. But we can uh, know. I said it myself anyway. But but I mean, Joe Biden essentially said the unsayable. Right. Which did is he that, say it while he was announcing the approval of the Willow of project? the Willow project in that Alaska? A, right. Well, with with, with uh, that would be a fine time to announce uh, that future generations are are, are completely doomed. Uh, as yeah. as the I will never drill on public lands. Biden uh, is announcing what what is it? The single biggest oil drilling project of. Uh, you know, neither one of the Bushes, I don't think, ever. Well, apparently, you know, if you want to do like the political thing, it was one of these deals where where the previous guy had already okayed it and and sort of put in enough um, legalese <laughs> that that the present guy couldn't sort of yeah. get out of it, you know. Um, but that doesn't mean that that. Uh, it doesn't fall on him, you know, historically, he's the one who, who had to sign off on it. So, you know, it, yeah, it, it's just, it's crazy. It's like, okay, here's how it works. We cannot have any more fossil fuels, period, as of today. But on the other Except hand, <laughs> let's drill in Alaska, right? I mean, that's... I love it. I love it. You know, when they ask a question in the uh, which one is this one? I, when they ask a question in a headline, the question in this headline. Why did Biden approve the Willow Projects oil drilling 
in Alaska. Why do you think Joe Biden? Uh, what What is your answer? Let's hear your answer to the question w- without reading the article. Uh, this is everything you need to know about the Willow Project. Um, I would say you will never get reelected unless you say yes. There, there's zero chance we will do everything we can to destroy your reelection campaign unless you say yes. That would be my my guess at it. And unless you say yes to big oil, right? Yeah. I don't know. That's just you know. I don't really my, know. My what well, my aunt, why did Biden approve the Willow Project? Well, he had all these. You know, he had a Democrat and two Republicans, all from Alaska, right? saying, please do this for us. We need this, right? And of course they need it because it means a lot of money for Alaska, right? So so yeah, Alaska happens to be one of the places that the United States calls its territory where there are a lot of resources that have, have a lot of value. So the people in Alaska, you know, the leadership of Alaska wants us to um, get money for them and, you know, if you lived in Alaska, you get the free check, right, from the government just by virtue of living in Alaska. So well, I think he approved it because he's a lying sack of shit corporate whore is why he approved it. <laughs> All right. Is, I know, I, I'm saying he's a politician. Uh, you know, that's why. I, I tried why, to be a little I, bit more subtle than you say. Like <laughs> any other politician, he's a lying sack of shit, okay. uh, corporate, corporite whore, whore. Uh, in, in the pockets of the fossil fuel industry, is why uh, is why he approved it. Yeah, uh, okay, it, all right, I, I all right. I, we have 150 years of history uh, going, uh, I, I mean, if 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 it had been anybody else, obvi- obviously Trump would have approved it. Yeah, well, he did. Yeah, 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 so yeah. if the question had been, why did Trump approve the Willow Project? Well, with Trump, you you couldn't uh, you couldn't have accused him of being a liar. This is the no one, no no he was he was this right is the one time you could not have uh, you, you could not accuse uh, uh, Donald Trump of being a lying sack of shit. He would have gone in there uh, and, and, and said, "Drill, baby, drill." In his ca- in, in his campaign promises, uh, he would have had the Willow Project as one of his campaign slogans. He would have worked the word "Willow" in there. So you could not. <laughs> he's you know he's just a corporate whore in the in the hands. But he, but he, even Donald Trump uh, on this one uh, would would have uh, would have gotten out of the liar in chief. Anyway, you know, you know, Sam, uh, I got to say, it's one of the reasons I don't follow politics because I hate them both. Right. I just hate all of this stuff. I hate what, you know, they both have the reasons for doing it. And to even think for a moment that that the, this shit had fucked for brains, Donald Trump would have had more integrity than, <laughs> than Joe Biden. Right. Just yeah. my I mean, mind. This, this, this really shows the level of the twilight zone we're living in that uh, that uh, Donald Trump approving the Willow Project would it, 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 the, the layers the the layers of, of this onion are are it, it's it, it, as you say uh, the 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 fuckery is what else we. Do we well, have- I'm just wondering whether we're gonna are we gonna have nuclear Armageddon sometime? Ah, well, think? that was somewhere in here. Now, what do you think? I mean, here's the thing in Ukraine, right? Um, uh, enough, enough Western weaponry has now gone in to support Ukraine that that Russia really is not going to be able to hold even the ground that they have, you know, somehow. Uh, obtained here, and and what is Putin going to do as his last act? That's the question. I mean, it, it's it is kind of one of those things that we're looking at over the next couple of months. I mean, it's it could happen. Uh, you know, I I don't. 
I personally don't talk much about that little kerfuffle over going on over there because I, I that's it, because it's, it's a bad hair day and you don't have any hair anymore, so you can't talk about bad hair days anymore. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> but Putin is preparing for a nuclear showdown, and we must be ready. Well, it, it's it, 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 again, it's the world is preparing for a nuclear showdown. I would, uh, Putin, I, I'm, I'm not on any level saying Putin is, is not part of that mix, but uh, everybody is preparing for a nuclear showdown. Where did the, did the doomsday clock get reset while I was gone or did that happen right before I left? Where are we sitting? I, I think we're now down to the hundredths of a second. I think they keep on... You know, it's like it's like yeah, they slice it thinner and thinner. Right. It's like the Olympics, you know, it's like every decade or 20 years they have to put another decimal digit on the world's <laughs> records in order to I think know. we're like I'm thinking we're like 20 seconds. I yeah, it, 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 it's, it's very close. It's very close. But I mean, that's such a game to play, you know, just to have this sort of doomsday clock out there. Um you know, we have right now um, a very strategic, very smart person who understands how to manipulate politicians at a level that, you know, few have ever understood. Who is that person? What? Yeah, yeah. Who is that person? Putin, right? Who is growing older, maybe getting a little bit sick, as some have rumored, and is losing the, the sort of war that was the dream of his life to recapture the old soviet empire right so you know he's right at this edge where where there are not many options left for him to save face and you know he has got to sort of um say well we are defending our homeland we are defending um you know people are the the other countries are attacking us you know it's gone this is our territory now crimea and they are you know, this is this is um, uh, a country that, you know, is now part of the USS of Russia. And, you know, they're trying to take that back from us. So, I mean, there's all sorts of reasons why you might do this. And there's very little that the West can do. I mean, if, if Russia decides to launch a tactical nuke, what is the what do we do? I mean, we don't. Yeah. We don't send our everything at the guy. It'd be crazy to do. What do we do if this guy launches a nuke? Do we just what do do like sanctions? I mean, what do we do? I think we should blow up Cuba. Cuba. There you go. I think we should put casinos back in Cuba. All right. So Venezuela. We have... uh, I guess if he blows up, you we can. Yeah, Cuba or Venezuela. Oh, Haiti. Let's blow it. Let's blow up Haiti, but. Well, they have enough. They're, they're, they're taking care of that themselves. Good Lord, that mess down there in Haiti. Don't even. I don't know. All so, right. So what about this? Uh, I You sent this other one like China and the population mm-hmm. thing there. And I, I mean, this is really almost funny. It's almost comical what's happening in China right now. It's uh, like they are desperate in China to have more people being born. Right. I mean, they're like. Uh, like uh, oh, yeah. After. Uh, uh, good Lord. Where is the China? Oh, did that one not make about anyway? What it is, uh, obviously, is uh, China has, has has completely, totally flipped on uh, on the one child. Uh, uh, it's gone from one child to two child to three children, <laughs> but nobody's having babies in China. So what they were doing is they've been adding all of these incentives to have babies, these financial incentives, but but, but it didn't kick in till the second kid. So still, if you had your first kid, you were on your own, you didn't get all of the goodies till for the second and third child. But now, since no one was getting to the second or third child, so now they've extended those that goodie bag to the first child to you know to convince childless couples to have their first child just just paying basically paying uh, people to have their first baby. 
Yeah, nobody wants to have a kid in China. I mean, I mean, all these people are saying, you know, we can't afford the kids. Kids are a big pain, you know. I mean, there's nothing about like the the climate impact of having children in this conversation. It's no, all, ab- no, 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 absolutely. It's all about the economics. Like, like China needs more children because a lot of people are getting old now. And there's nobody around to support this old, this, this, these old guys, right? The old people. So it's all part of that bottleneck, that good well, old bottleneck, is one of the one of those little squeezings coming, uh, coming together. But I mean, if we were to think back into, you know, and you experienced this, I remember um, this firsthand from the '80s and the '90s when there was this one-child policy that was really austere, right? And they were so serious about not yeah. crossing like a billion people in China. And they were so serious about, you know, keeping the population under control, the numbers under control. And I mean, we now see the consequences of that in, like you say, the bottleneck, right? And the thing is, that's that's just a prototype for what's going to happen planet wide. That's, that's what's everywhere, right? I mean... This is what's going to happen. We are going, the whole planet's going to become China, where, where you know, there simply are not going to be enough humans that are young to support an aging population. Man, uh, you're, singing, you're singing my song. I, 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 uh, I, I hope you're right. But uh, I mean, <laughs> when we see, you know, the pain that China is going through, right, that is the pain for the planet. In in a you know, and China is like an eighth of the planet or a seventh of the planet, right? I mean, there's a one point four billion, yeah, a sixth of the planet, right? Yeah. A sixth. Well, 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 China and India together are one third of the planet. Unreal. I mean, it's just unreal. But I mean, just to see this, this like, you know, scramble. We need all you. We need all the young people to fuck a lot, right? That's what they're saying. I mean, I mean, I couldn't believe it when I read that. We need you guys to screw. We need you guys to have kids. Well, give them my. I, 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 anyway, I, I, I can only. But it's not just China. It, it's uh, you know, this is the response to the the only ray of good news on the planet is declining birth rates. And obviously, uh, what is the reaction to the only, the only ray of good news on this planet? Yeah, it, it's yeah. absolute freak out that there's not enough people uh, on this planet. Right, right. It's like it's like the opposite. It's not like, oh, good, we have a declining birth. You know, <laughs> we're gonna have a decrease in our population. Oh, that's great. No, that's you're right. It's like it's like. It was like a freak out, total freak out to the only good news, right? Uh, oh, yeah. And like I was over on the World Economic Forum today I did, in my rant I did today, you know, reading the only article I could find on overpopulation on the world, you know, the World Economic, Klaus Schwab, who's trying to reduce the reduce the population to one billion, you know, to absolutely celebrating absolutely celebrating 8 billion people, that this is a milestone of human achievement, and they are charging ahead to 11 billion, celebrating 8 billion uh, longer lifespans. That's sure as hell something to celebrate, that that there's, there's 8 billion people living longer lives and getting richer, able to consume more. So from the World Economic Forum perspective, exactly. That's what, uh, uh, you, you know, the, the new world, the, the global industrial economy is 100% dependent on an ever-expanding population and per person. You know, they were celebrating, they saying the population has increased eight times since 1800, which is something to celebrate, according to the World Economic Forum, that there's eight times as many people as there were in 1800. But what do you think the global GDP, the global gross domestic product, which is something they're really, so how much has it increased? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't keep the 90, track of those things. 90. What? 90? Nine zero. 90 times that the the population 
has has increased eight times, which is certainly in itself something to celebrate uh, if you're part of the New World Order. But uh, the fact that the the GDP, which is basically the the amount of the planet that we've eaten, has the, that eight times increase in population is reflected in a mighty times uh, increase in GDP, uh, which is the which is in a lot of ways the more important statistic that the World Economic Forum is celebrating. You know, this is uh, my interview with Tim Garrett. Uh, if, if, if anyone who hasn't listened to that, it, it was really Tim Garrett, I think, who finally, you know, he this this guy that even through my thick skull, what you know, when he explained this, he was talking about this very, this very thing that is this, that what did he say? That we are going that that you look exactly what what the World Economic Forum was talking about today. Tim Garrett was looking at that as as a physicist at the same at the pretty much the same statistic, not exactly, but you know what I'm saying. And he was saying between 1750 and 2020, what we have done to this planet is going to be done again by 2050 in the next 30 years that humanity is going to that it is going to do to this planet what it took the planet from 1750 till 2020 to do and he said it can't happen it, no, it, it, it can't. would violate it can't. the law of physics yeah no that that happen. breaks that breaks things i mean that 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 just breaks things right and i mean this is a really good question um and i mean you and i right you you are in parts of the planet that I'm not, but I'm in a part of the planet that I have to admit feels like one of the epicenters of doom. I mean, honestly, Sam, I mean, this is this is totally screwed up here, right? Between well, I'm in Texas, so uh... <laughs> well, I mean, you might have the political doom, but we have the physical doom, yeah. right? Um, so I know, I know, Garrett, right? He's an outstanding. Uh, scientist and researcher and communicator. And um, the the feeling I have in 2023, I mean, I sort of nuanced this in 2022 while this stuff might happen. But 2023 feels like we are genuinely seeing, you know, st- shit happen, right? I mean, I mean, what's your reaction to that? Don't you really, like, don't you? Well, as I, I ran off in an in, in escape for half of the, the first the, the first 10 weeks of 2020, I, I was gone. To, uh, I'm off to Mexico drinking tequila. But, you know, as, as, as Garrett was saying, you know, I mean, his quote was, something has to give. It, the, 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 as a physicist looking you know, looking at this not from an economist uh, eyes, but from a physicist eyes, something has to give. In the next thirty years, the, the this is going to collapse. There, there. I mean, but no thirty years, thirty years happen. seems like an extraordinarily long period right now. Well, I'm not saying he said it's going to take thirty years. He said it's going it at, at, at some point in the next 30 years, thanks to uh, the World Economic Forum and, 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 and all of the rest of them uh, pursuing their policies, that model, the unlimited growth on a finite planet, it is going to hit the wall. And we are going to hit this bottleneck, and yeah, and, the bottleneck, and, and uh, it is certainly increasing. Uh, I, I mean, the, the first. I, I mean, look at that, Sam. I'm reading this is the mainstream media on the Ides of March. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, for me, the the um, the feeling is is that because you know we have El Nino returning, right? We've we've talked about these, that. So I have. We've had these that. three consecutive years of La Nina that have been sort of record. You know, we've had this cold unprecedented three consecutive years 
And then, you know, typically you go from La Nina to a neutral phase where it's neither one or the other, right? But if you actually look at the modeling that's taking place, we are heading towards an El Nino at like record pace. I mean, this thing is flipping. You can't believe how fast. And the Bureau of Meteorology from Australia, for example, has us over a 2.0 C anomaly, positive anomaly, by August, right? So we're going from a negative to a positive. Yeah. Like that's a three degree swing, you know, right in, in just a few months. And what that means is, is all of this, this um, heat that's been sort of stored in the ocean. So what happens is that, you know, we sort of bury the heat because of the direction the wind is blowing over, over the Pacific Ocean. So when the, the wind sort of switches direction, all of these, this heat that's been buried comes back up to the surface and then it's sort of swung over the, the northern hemisphere, right? And it's all unleashed on us. And that is prospectively going to happen this year, later this year. And almost certainly by next year. So, you know, uh, just just pretty much every um, climate scientist is paying attention to this is saying we're going to break 1.5 C probably next year. You know, um, even House Father, even our the renowned House, House Father <laughs> tweeted recently, he said, I may have been a little bit conservative in my projections. <laughs> Right? Can you believe that? Like, like maybe I need to revisit. Oh, Zeke. Say it ain't so, Zeke. Right, Zeke. Right, Zeke Housewater. I mean, so what we are looking forward to is not thirty years away. We may be seeing some serious stuff come down later this year or next year. I mean, unbelievable heat waves, unbelievable fires, unbelievable storms. Right. And and, you know, right now, if you look at sort of the global temperature model that's going on, we we came actually we tied. All right. We just tied the record all time um, heat, like like average temperature for the entire northern hemisphere. Right. Yeah. So the if you sort of average the entire northern hemisphere, the, the you know, the temperature, we tied the all time record heat which was from 2016, which was the last big El Nino year. Well, we're in a La Nina, right? So where this is going as we transition into El Nino is just hotter than that. So, you know, it's, it's unclear how hot this thing is going to get, but but this coming summer is, is going to be, um, you know, a, a transition into a planet that you and I don't recognize. I mean, that that is what I would say based on all the information I have, right? This okay. is not going to be a place we recognize come October. If, if, if you could do this, and, and uh, uh, is there a short answer to this? Because I, I was reading this somewhere uh, on, on some comment, and I admit I would not know how to respond to this if a climate change denier came up, they, 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 I think this is a fairly good point. It was the gist. I mean, I, I'm paraphrasing. I don't have it in front of me, but the gist of it was, okay, these alarmists, these climate alarmists, such as the two of us, are saying that we've been in a La Nina year for three years. So the first two years of those La Nina years, California was in the middle of a drought. So in the third year of La Nina, it was the it, it was one hundred and so. Uh, it, it, so why, if it was a La Nina, why did nobody call this? What happened uh, in your neck of the woods the past few weeks? It, 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 why was it a drought last year, La Nina, and in all these atmospheric rivers? I mean, I don't know. I'm asking you. Do you know? So, I mean, it's a great question. I'm glad people are thinking that way. And it certainly is, um, you know, gives fodder to deniers. But if you actually look at the entire northern hemisphere and you look at the temperature anomalies over Asia, you know, Siberia, India, the Middle East, into parts of Europe, right? If you actually look at the entire Northern Hemisphere and, and the heat waves that people have experienced, right? And the planet has experienced, it's like bright red over 90% yeah. of it. And it just turns out that 10% 
that's blue is here on the West Coast, right? Where the snow <laughs> is. I mean, we have essentially gotten all the cold air that the rest of the planet should have gotten this winter has been sort of funneled here. And here's the, how this happens, because this is a little technical detail. It's called a Rossby wave. And essentially what keeps the cold air up by the North Pole is this temperature gradient between the equator and the North Pole. So we expect the equator, equator to be hot and the North Pole to be very cold. And that sort of differential keeps the circulation of the cold air sort of locked in around the North Pole. But what happens as the equator and the middle latitude sort of heat up, right? And the, I'm sorry, and the North Pole heats up even faster, roughly four times as fast, right? That's what we know. The, the North Pole is heating roughly four or five times as fast as the rest of the planet, is that those two things get sort of closer together in temperatures. So the sort of lock and key for that cold air up there, it, it loses that, that lock because we don't have that temperature differential between the equator and the North Pole. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so that's where you get that air sort of spilling down and it finds a place, right? And the thing is that Greenland, and this is where Bex, uh, Blacksmith, uh, is that his name, Paul, um, Bex, really yeah. um, sort of um, understands the dynamics of what's going on. We have this block of ice over Greenland. That becomes the focal point for this sort of polar circulation because that's a locked in cold place. And so, so, you know, we get these long standing, these long duration events. And, and the last long duration event we had, by the way, was in 2017, 18, when we had the Thomas fire and the, the Montecito mudslide here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. for five weeks in November and December, we had like 70 and 80 degrees, right? It was like, it's December, it's 80 degrees here. And then suddenly in January, we had, you know, a rainfall rate of three inches an hour and it killed a whole bunch of people. So that's what I'm expecting here. We have had months and months and months of all that Arctic air that was supposed to stay up there. It's like, us, right? And when that collapses, we're going to have a heat wave. And I mean, that's what really concerns me here is this, this idea of a Rossby wave collapsing and what comes after that. So I don't know if that answers the question, but that's kind of like the, the physics behind everything that's going on here. Well, it, 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 it all circles back to, uh, as you were, we started off about all the growth that you're saying, and, and, and I've been thinking this since day one, with all of the celebration about all of the end of the drought in California. I mean, that's just, whoa, strike a match to, uh, yeah, kind of California looks like probably upstate New York, like behind me there. I'm, I'm, it, it, yeah, imagine all of everything you see in that picture behind me turning brown and curling up and throwing a match on it. So if it, I were to take a picture of these hills today, so this picture is from, I don't know, about, about three, four weeks ago. If I were to take a picture of these hills today and put that as my background, you would not believe it's like, it's like St. Patrick's Day green. <laughs> this green is from from you know the bottom to the top. It is it is just brilliant, brilliant bright green green, and it's going to be a hell of a wildflower year in California. Great year, great. You know, I'm going to see my allergist next week. It's going to be <laughs> the best year for allergies ever. Yeah, good year to be an allergist. Uh, you know, Sam, I, you know, you have this channel collapse chronicles, and you've been doing this for so long. And I'm kind of new to the game, but I got to tell you, this is this is a bad year. And, uh, you know, when we have these kind of aberrations where Europe is in the worst drought in 500 years last summer, and then they haven't gotten any rain this winter, you know, when we have India already saying, hey, we're expecting record heat waves, and they had record heat waves last year, right? But they're expecting more record heat waves this year when you have fires in Argentina going on that they can't believe, you know, you have record heat in Argentina. I mean, the, the planet is, is falling apart, you know, and, and you have chronicled this stuff for over a decade. Right. And, 
you know, it, it's what your eyes sort of witnessed on a day to day thing. And then yet here you are, you know, right at the edge uh, of the. It's just. Uh... I, I I have everything I probably said on my first video. Uh, I I I would say is what was that fifteen? Well, on in some places uh, on yeah, going on fifteen years. One hundred percent of the evidence that I was talking about. If anything, it's faster. Uh, and worse than previously thought. That's the that's the bottom line. It's faster and worse than previously thought. It's hard to even talk about. It. I mean, at some level, because you realize, this, I mean, you can talk about this abstractly and sort of, you know, part of you is happy to see civilization collapse because you hate civilization, right? Because of what we've done to this beautiful planet, right? But the other part of that is, is that there really truly is suffering going on, right? I mean, not, yeah, human yeah. suffering, but I mean, just a lot of suffering going on. It it does get hard to bear witness to after a while. I, you know, <laughs> I don't know for you, whether, whether you, how you managed to keep up the, you know, um, yeah. I know, I mean, me too, honestly. Um, but we're headed for, uh, you know, we're not going to like like humanity's not going to be extinct in 3 years that that's total damn long. it <laughs> right or two and a half years now i don't know what it is right i mean well it's march of 23 and i've never known if if you know this whole thing by 20 does that mean by january literally the preposition by 2026 means by january 1st right but you better believe that they're going to be saying no that, that you know who is going to be saying no uh he's going to be doing like some bill clinton grammatical uh changing and it'll be december 31st 2026 but you know push it forward a year it doesn't matter i mean i mean the humanity is is going to find yeah just just the denial just the uh consumerism the plastic right the, the we got to have another trip make another one more vacation you know i read an article um i know we're going a little bit far here afield with this but i read an article recently that some travel magazine was saying here are the places you need to visit like before, the, before the shit hits, yeah. right? before before climate change makes them unavailable anymore, you know that's like the new slogan. You know, yeah, my, the pyramids my, before the fuck happens. Yeah, my rich sister is is kind of is kind of uh, latching on to that, so she she's taken one of those one of those trips to Alaska, uh, see the fjords before they're all gone. Anyway, uh, I got to see a little. I, in 1973, I got to see the Yucatan Peninsula before it was all gone, and uh, I, 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 you know, not to to literally not go somewhere in in 50 years from 1973 to 2023 to never go there and not see the if if you went to the Yucatan in 1973 and 1974 and 1975 you know what I'm saying it wouldn't right. look, see it It'd be, uh, but go there in 1973 and don't go back for 50 years wow and, and uh that is uh if, if 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 there's anywhere anyone listening to this can think of you know, where they were old enough, like, you know, like I was a young teenager. If you can think of anywhere, anywhere on this planet that you were 50 years ago and have never been back, that is where I would go this year. And uh, it really brings things into focus uh, where this planet has come in the past 50 years and I think we can thank Klaus Schwab as much as anybody for that. You well, know. So, so you made me think. So I was on the big island of Hawaii in 1977. Have you been back? 
2001 or three or something like that. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, <laughs> I lived in a sugar shack outside of Pahoa. Um, you know, this is before Nancy Reagan, that's all I'll say. <laughs> you know? I don't think they have any sugar shacks in Hawaii because there's no sugar cane in Hawaii anymore. Yeah, exactly. There's no sugar cane in Hawaii, which I think is a good, which I think is a good thing, but. Well, and well, so good, I'm not sure it's such a good thing for the Dominican Republic. Uh, so, okay, my friend, I think, uh, yeah. We'll save the 100 trillion pieces of space junk for a, for uh, the next time we get one. Oh, my God. When, what year were you born? I, I'm i older than you, by the way. I'm 58. You're like 60 or 61 or something. I'm 63. 63? Oh. You're a kid. You're yeah, like so what a... year were you born? What? 58. 68, whatever that math is. 58. 58. I'm 65 years old. You were born in 58. Well, I was born in 59. So... <clears throat> One year before you were born, and we'll just we'll just wrap up with this thought. One year before you were born, two years before I was born, there was not one human artifact in space. Not one. Not one. Uh, the first one, what was that, Sputnik in 57? Today, the estimate, 100. Hundred trillion pieces of space junk. One hundred trillion with a T. You know, you can do all these things. You stack, you make a stack of dollar bills, and it will go. You, you know, from here to Jupiter and back is what one hundred trillion looks like. So zero in uh, in, in nineteen fifty six. One hundred trillion today, and right now. 9,000 satellites, functioning satellites, in the next seven years, how many satellites are going to be navigating all of this space? Uh, it's up to Elon Musk. I mean, it's 100% on it's Elon 60, Musk. 000. There's 9,000 9, now. In seven years, there's going to be 60,000 uh satellites floating through 100 trillion which will be 200 trillion pieces of space junk you know they just had one of these chinese rogue chinese satellites it just disintegrated over texas a few nights ago they got no press outside of texas this thing could have slammed into where i'm sitting uh so we'll we'll just leave it with uh we'll leave it with that story with those 100 trillion amazing pieces of space junk uh floating around this planet as we as the plastic on our own planet is entering the geological record but uh humans we're gonna turn that we're gonna turn this around so so i want to say something in the spirit of uh of how you end your uh shows personally um I had a colon colonoscopy on my Oh, boy. So, yes, they shoved a tube up there. I got to actually watch it happening. <laughs> um, How many piece, pieces of space junk were floating around? I, I, they didn't, I didn't see any plastic. There could have been plastic up there. What do I know? Hey, <laughs> go out there and have a colonoscopy yeah. while you still can. Get out there and enjoy the view of your, uh, 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 oh. your rectum. <laughs> While you still can. Uh, All right, Sam. Let's call it till next time. This was fantastic, and I, I we will try. We will try to do this like once a month, guys. That'd but, be great. Uh, we'll do this. We'll, we'll we'll come back. Maybe have an Easter show. All right, Sam. We'll see you later. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.